Let's continue our Excel like plot discussion with a tutorial that shows you how easy it is to create a histogram in Python. We'll stay in the realm of baseball. One of the basic things we know about baseball is that the American League and the National League have some different batting rules. In the National League, pitchers, often the worst hitter in the lineup, must go to the plate and bat. But in the American League, the pitchers have their spot in the lineup replaced by a DH, a designated hitter, often the best hitter on the team. So this led me to wonder, what kind of effect these differences in lineups might have on the game. I decided to look at the OPS, the on base percentage plus slugging percentage, instead of the batting average. This is because the OPS is seen as a better indicator of a player's overall batting ability, since it measures not only the hitting average, but also the player's hitting power and their ability to draw bases on balls as well. I pulled data from this site once again and saved it as plain text into an Excel file called 1977 MLB Batting Stats. Remember, we first have to start by importing packages that aren't included with the Python standard library so that we can access their data and functions. To manipulate our data quickly and efficiently, we'll use pandas. Let's first load our data. Now, we create our histogram for the National League OPS. For the simplest figure, first set the lead column in our data to be the index of our data frame, like so. Then we add a couple of lines to create the histogram of the on base plus slugging percentage for just the National League players. Now type this to see the plot and there's your histogram. For the sake of understanding the data, let's add a label. Also, let's add a title to the plot itself. Let's run that and there you have it. Notice the shape of the distribution because we are going to compare it to the American League batting distribution. To enable easy comparison, let's add the histogram for the American League on the same figure. To do that, we'll have to change a couple of things. First, let's set up our plot to have two subplots side by side. The end calls parameter indicates we want two columns, giving us two plots side by side. Adding share X and share Y will make sure the X and Y axes have the same scale for both plots. Then let's create a histogram of the National League in one subplot and a histogram of the American League in the other subplot. We'll leave the label and titles in place to see their behavior. Let's run that and... Okay, well, what do we want to change about this? Let's start with putting the National League title in its proper place and while we're at it, let's add some changes to that title style. That's better. Let's do the same for the American League plot. Nice. That helps a lot. I'm noticing that the histogram bin thicknesses aren't the same. Let's set that in order. Type this and run it. This plot is starting to look pretty good, thanks to Panda's NumPy and Matplotlib. So, let's work through a few more refinements to get that custom image we like. Let's change the color of the histograms to better differentiate which is which. Add this to the code and there we go. Finally, let's add a couple tweaks to make this thing pop. We can add the year of the data as a super title by adding this. And add this code to add a seaboard style to the overall plot. Now run it and there's your final plot. Wow, it looks great. Ready for your presentation. So, what did we find out? Well, at first glance, it seems to show that there are more terrible, I mean terrible, hitters in the National League, and that could lead you to hypothesize that maybe the DH does make a difference. This would be something that you could investigate further using Pandas and Matplotlib, but for now, we'll leave it at that. As you can see, it's very easy to generate a basic histogram in Python, and then you have a lot of power and flexibility to make it look precisely how you want. The other great thing about Python is that you have the full power of Python and its scientific libraries right at your fingertips. So you can move from cleaning your data to analysis to plotting and back again seamlessly. 
without exporting and importing data or switching tools. Thanks for joining us. If you haven't already, please make sure to click the subscribe button below to get more of our tiny tutorial videos as well as other great content. If you find these kinds of Python and Panda tips useful, you might also want to follow our Twitter feed where you will find loads of useful Python materials including handy cheat sheets, white papers, animated GIFs explaining technical concepts, and more.